Okay, I've had a little play around and uh, I understand why this is not working now. Um, basically, it is to do with that default um, boot option. It seems that although um, we can set extra options in the UEFI and they get stored, um, for some reason VirtualBox decides it's not going to remember those um, and it will just revert back to a default um, boot option which is something that we haven't provided um, so what I did to get it working was um, if we get the system back up again as we did before so what we did we typed in the name of this uh, uh, hard disk you can see it says HD there and I presume that's partition one where it was and it's a GPT type partition so we just type FS0 colon oh, FS0 not FSO and you see the prompt changes and then we type in the location and the name of the um, EFI image that we want to boot with so it's in backslash EFI backslash LFS backslash I think it was grub x64 dot EFI yeah and that's booted in so we're back in there now so let's log in mount the boot partition forward slash boot if we go into the boot, go into the EFI. So that that's one of the options. Um, I assume the hint's been done with the idea in mind that, that there's an ex existing default boot option, and this is an additional one that can be selected through the you know the um, UEFI BIOS. Um, this VirtualBox works in a slightly different way and I've sort of also kind of understand as well why these I've seen EFI in capitals is because this is or, or can be a, a FAT partition, FAT file system um, although the fact is we've formatted it to a VFAT which is like the Windows 95 onwards version of the FAT file system we can have long file names and um, uppercase and lowercase but the uppercase would make sense for a FAT FAT16 file system. So, what I'm going to do is keep keep in with that and just keep um, everything I do here in capitals. So, what you need to do is create a new directory called boot. And if we enter that directory, and all I did was I copied the EFI image that we've got in LFS and copied it here but change its name to boot uh, x64.efi so you see we're in the boot mount point EFI we've just created this boot partition uh, sorry boot directory and we've just copied that EFI executable from LFS into this boot partition and we've called it boot x64.efi and that's all there is to it. So if I now reboot as we did before, just to check that we can still reboot without powering up off the machine. Yep, so that's worked. Right, this looks like this happens occasionally when you boot um, Linux in VirtualBox so unfortunately we can't test the reboot but it will work from uh, power down now and there's the grub it's worked from power down so what it is it's it's looking at it's looking for that boot x64 EFI in that boot directory in the EFI directory and you can check that with the EFI boot manager if you just type that command you can see that the boot current now is one because it, it's, it's able to boot from the hard drive option because that directory and that file exists so it's not th this is the order it's, it's trying to boot in 
you can see the boot order there. So there's nothing in the CD drive, so that's failed. But now because it's found the boot with the boot x64 EFI file, it's managing to boot from option one, the boot option one, the hard drive. Previously that was failing and that's why it was dropping through to the internal shell, which is that system we saw where we had to type in the FS0 and the actual path to the EFI file. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Um, it's been quite an interesting learning experience for me and uh, I hope it's uh, a good, useful learning experience for yourself as well. I'd appreciate it if you um, got any comments and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you once again. Goodbye.